We are doing our review on Freud's psychosexual development. Freud's view of personality development. Um, person, Freud believes personality development occurs during a movement through stages. These stages are called psychosexual stages because each stage is associated with an erogenous zone. An erogenous zone is an area of the body that is associated with pleasure during that specific stage. In three of the stages, conflicts can occur. If a conflict is not resolved successfully during its stage, fixation then occurs. Stage one is the oral stage. It occurs from birth to about 18 months. Infant gratification comes from its experiences with the world through mouth and lips. Tension is reduced through eating. Pleasurable sensations are met through licking, tasting, and sucking. There are also two sub-stages. The first sub-stage is an oral incorporative stage. This occurs during the first six months, where in which the infant is helpless and, and dependent. The infant is more or less limited to taking food and other experiences in. Two different traits emerge depending on what the infant experiences. An infant exposed to a benign world will exhibit traits of optimism and trust. Infants exposed to a less supportive world will develop mistrust. The second substage is oral sadistic stage. This starts when the infant is teething. Sexual pleasure comes from biting and chewing. The infants are often weaned from bottle or breast and begin biting and chewing whole foods. This phase is thought to determine who will become verbally aggressive later in life. Oral individuals will generally relate to the world orally by being more preoccupied with food and drink, more likely to smoke, drink, and bite their nails when stressed, and be verbally aggressive when angry. The second stage of Freud's psychosexual development is the anal stage, which lasts from about 18 months of age to the third year. This is when they begin toilet training, where they learn bowel and bladder control. If a parent uses a lax parenting style and the child rebels, the child will be anal expulsive as an adult. This means that he or she will be more likely to be messy, disorganized, reckless, and careless. A good example of this would be hoarder, hoarders from the show. Um, but if a parent uses a critical parenting style, and the child withholds then as an adult he or she will be neat careful and passive aggressive which is an anal, anal retentive person um, a good example of that would be like the extreme couponers where they're just completely neat and organized the importance of the anal stage is that the baby must learn independence, cleanliness, control in order to move on to the next stage. Okay. The phallic stage is between ages three to five. Within the stage is the complex where a child has sexual interest in the opposite sex parent. Consequently, the sexual interest can lead towards anger and hostility towards the same sex parent. For example, a boy may be sexually interested in his mother and hate his father. A boy may fear that the father will castrate him to eliminate lust for the mother, called castration anxiety. On the other hand, girls can experience penis envy, the female counterpart to castration anxiety. Both of these are resolved through identification of the same-sex parent. The phallic stage determines a person's attitude towards sexuality, competitiveness, and personal adequacy. A woman that is fixed in this stage will be seductive and flirtatious, but surprised when boys want to have sex with them. A male is that is fixed in this stage will seduce many women and want to have many children. The next stage is the latency period. This occurs from age 6 up until the early teen years. During this time, there is no new developmental conflicts, which results in a period of relative calm. Attention during this time is focused on other pursuits, such as intellectual or social in nature. Last but not least, we have the genital stage. 
For I believe people don't enter this stage automatically, and that it is rarely achieved in its entirety. If all the earlier stages have been accomplished, then a person's libido will be focused on the genitals and remain there until death. Early sex was seen as selfish and focused only on the individ individual's needs and wants. In the genital stage, a desire to share mutual sexual gratification with another emerges. An individual is now capable of loving someone else and caring about them in an affectionate and warm way. If an, er if an earlier stage has not been satisfied, a person will struggle in a relationship and remain selfish. The genital stage is merely the beginning, not the end of one's life. This is something Freud would like everyone to strive for.